All right, so we'll go ahead and get started for today. Uh, today we're going to do something slightly different, and uh, I think this is this is also kind of a fun uh, little side project. But we we should theoretically be at the place where we've finished uh, the bulk of what we need to do our interior and exterior night and day renderings. And so I pulled up where we left off last class. Um, this is actually still in process. I made a few tweaks and I'm re-rendering because a few of my objects didn't show up. Um, this is the daytime render. I went back to that one. I used my VR op file to bring back in the day, turn on the sun, etc. cetera. Uh, and I wanted to show this because the grass actually did work. The fur that I created ended up working and you can see it there. Um, so I can go back through the steps that were necessary to create it so that you can kind of see it, but um, it certainly helps what's happening in the foreground. The background is always a little bit challenging. We can solve a lot of the background problems uh, using a Z-depth filter in Photoshop after the fact. And I'll show you guys how to set that up a little bit later on in the semester uh, when we have some time to, to talk about Photoshop Plus. But I kind of wanted to give you a sense for what the exterior daytime render could or should look like. And so this is kind of what our goal would be for the exterior daytime render. So I have that. I will, uh, I'll end up saving that at some point, but we'll let it kind of chug along in the background. Um, and what we're gonna be talking about today uh, is actually kind of a departure from the big renderings that we've done. So the, the theory being that the rendering should be able to be pretty much done and finished on your own at this point. So everything should be relatively resolved. And we're gonna move into getting other outputs from Rhino. And today we'll talk about sections because section cuts are some of the most valuable things that you can get out of Rhino um, to kind of see what's happening in your model and, and some of the most beautiful renderings or drawings that end up on a uh, poster for a presentation are those sectional perspectives. And so how do we create those using the model that we already built in Rhino? Uh, we will continue and extend this further uh, in the next several exercises where we'll start talking about how do you create line drawings from your Rhino models. So an elevation view, for example, or a plan view or a perspective view. We're going to talk about all those outputs going forward. Do note that we skipped exercise 224. We also skipped lecture 224. That was your working session day that was last week. Uh, so we're on to 225. So there won't be anything due or turned in for 224. That was just a freebie day. Uh, 225, we're going to actually be creating a section of your model. Uh, so I went ahead and I'm going to open up. I actually have everything open right now. Um, I have my base retreat file, this one. I have my Tahoe site file because I was working on that. I have my master site file, this one that's currently in the process of rendering. Um, and then I also have a tester today that I'm going to use to show you kind of what's happening in some of these section cuts. So uh, I'll be flipping back to that one uh, occasionally just so we can kind of illustrate what's, what's going on. Um, so one of the key important components of doing this is that when we start to work with our model and create a section cut or create a line drawing, we're going to do things that will uh, harm our drawing. So we always wanna make sure that we take our final version that we're doing the renders from and do a save as. So I'll go to file and then save as before I do anything else. Actually, I should do file save first. So let's do file and then save. That means I'm current, everything's been saved. Then I'll do a file save as, and I'm gonna change the file name to something like master site Tahoe grass section. And I mean, when we do a plan view or whatever, we'll, we'll change that as well. So this is a, a section and I'll click on save. And this allows me to start to work with this file and edit it and break it up and, and do the kinds of things that I'm gonna need to do to be able to create the section. So let's talk a little bit about sections first. I'm gonna jump over into my sample file here. Let's make it big. And uh, let's see here. I need to show the a few things. Let's get rid of this. There we go. And let's hide these two so you can see it. Perfect. So I have some, these are kind of almost like shipping containers, okay? That I kind of built up so that we could see what was going on uh, when we start to cut these sections. Uh, so one of them is, is solid. The other two um, are actually kind of 
split apart into sections so that I can kind of illustrate what's happening here. Um, inside each of these, I do have a light source. Uh, actually, if I were to switch into my uh, ghosted mode, we'd be able to see it. I have a light source. It's just a point light. Again, this is for experimentation purposes, not for final render quality. So I did that just so that there's a light inside these rooms. Okay. So if I were to take these objects and I were to render them in V-Ray, we'd get like what we've been seeing. Well, actually, this one here is like what we'd be seeing typically. So let me, uh, let me clarify this here. Sorry, since there's so many little pieces, these are all testers. Let's hide this. Go ahead and hide that light. These also don't matter. Let's hide them and we'll hide this one. Okay, so scratch that. Let's do a re-render right here so we see our whole objects. So we'll go ahead and render it out. All right, and what we're seeing is essentially that shipping container with a couple windows cut in it. And if we were down looking at the inside here, we'd see that the sun is casting light into this room. Let's render that again. All right, so you can see the lights coming through the window. You can see a little bit of the light, of the artificial light that's there. And so don't worry about my texture mapping being off and, and whatever. The, the point is that we're seeing the whole object. Now, V-Ray has something called a clipping plane. And so if we come up to our V-Ray toolbars here, it's this right here, add clipper plane. So if I click on that add clipper plane, it's gonna ask me what, what's the corner of my rectangle or I could choose vertical. So we want a vertical one. And then it'll ask me for a start of edge and an end of edge. So let's go ahead and uh, start it right here. And we'll do an end there and we'll do a height, something like this. And you see that as soon as I create it, it clips everything on the left side of the page for me. If I wanted to clip the opposite, I could select it and type flip and it would then clip the opposite. Obviously we wanna be clipping what we currently have. So then I can move it much like I can with a uh, SketchUp section plane. I can move it and we can kind of see a live preview of how it's cutting through the building. So if I were, for example, to, to cut right about there through the window, right? And then perform a rendering, we would get a beautiful section cut where V-Ray has actually interpreted and filled in what we've cut through with materials. So that's really nice. Unfortunately, kind of like the way that uh, SketchUp creates these section planes, as soon as we create the section plane, it's as if this end of the building doesn't exist anymore. It's just like all wide open and the sun is therefore falling all the way in. Furthermore, the shadow over here that's being cast by this building right, is clipped where the clipping plane is. So in reality, the shadow would exist and it would continue out here. So we're seeing it as if the, the left half of the building doesn't exist. So there's nothing wrong with this as a rendering. It's a great way of kind of previewing what's happening and certainly it's easy. And we can, we can again adjust it, and move it. We could even move it way back in here. We could re-render it. Uh, so it's quick, it's easy. It gives us a good idea of what the section plane is doing. This is actually a little bit awkward because it's, let me jump back here for a second. It's registering this whole thing because there's not a window in it as being filled in. So it's probably better to be cutting back here where there's a window right about there when we go ahead and do our renders and our cuts. Now we can, right? If we don't wanna see the, if we wanna go back to seeing the whole, whole building, we can choose to hide that plane. It doesn't make it disappear from our view here, but then we can go ahead and render it. And it would be as if the whole building's back. The only way to make it disappear from our uh, view would be to go ahead and delete it. Let me show it. We may also be able to 
if I go into my V-Ray asset editor, uh, I'm not sure if it's listed. There's the clipping plane. I think maybe we can turn it off here. Will it show up again? No, it's still not previewing with our whole drawing. So the only way to do it is to actually delete it. So I'll type in delete, I'll hit the delete key and it will then go away. So in that context, right, it's quick, it's easy. It gives us an easy section plane and there's nothing wrong with it except that it opens up the side of your building to sunlight. So we can't see what's happening inside your building as if the left half of the building was still there. So there's another way around it. And this is far more complicated. It takes a lot more time, but the quality of the renderings ends up improving significantly. And with that, we're going to use a special material. And I will, I'll do all of this live on my actual model. So you'll see it happen. But we're going to use a special material. I have it for you to download right here. I call it a see-through material. And this is a material that couldn't actually exist in real life. The see-through material is um, opaque to light, but transparent to the viewer. So it'd be kind of like if somebody made you invisible, but you could still see your shadow. So this is a, it's a fake material, but it, it solves our purposes quite well. So if we look at the preview of this material, it's actually really kind of weird. So let's see if we bring it up here, right? So when we look at the preview of that material, it's, it's showing kind of a black material, but that's actually just the shadow of the material on the ball. It's really kind of odd. So when I do that, right, I've ended up, and let me look at this in top view just to kind of clean this up a little bit. Let's take these guys and go. hide all of them, just for clarity purposes. Let's hide this one too. So what I've ended up doing is I've taken this and I've, I've created a plane, this plane here, and I've split this part of the building into two halves. And let me go ahead and hide this plane. I've taken this outer half and I've assigned that a see-through material, and the rest of this has its normal material. So when I go to render this view, the result, maybe, come on. Apparently it's thinking. Let me save this and leave it. See if that helps. Come on. So pleasant. Uh, let me enable the uh, V-Ray Interactive and let's see if it'll do it for me here. V-Ray Interactive, not available, how oh, nice. All right, I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna open Rhino again since it's not letting me run it here. Hold on a second. All right, let's try that render again. And then let's click on the teapot and see if we can get an actual render. Sorry. There we go. 
So what's happening here let it catch up just a little bit so we get a little bit higher quality there, is it's rendering as if the rest of that building still exists. So where the V-ray clipping plane cut off the ground, the ground still exists because I haven't split the ground, but where I split the building, right, it's cut through the building, but the whole building is still casting its shadow, like that, and the, window, if we look at this edge of the window, the sunlight that's pouring through the window is still casting as if the rest of the building was still there and the window opening was still there. So what this does with all the extra work that's involved is it gives us accurate representation of what's happening inside the building as if the whole building were there rather than just slicing off a piece of the, the building. So this is a far superior rendering than we would get if we just used the V-Ray clipping plane. Again, it involves a lot more work. So I wanna show you the difference on an actual live model. So this was, again, this was just my tester so you can see it, but let's go to my master site, Tahoe Grass, right? Uh, I think it's time for this one to be done. Uh, let me save it, let me stop it. Let me save it just so that I have it as a backup here. JPEG, there we go. All right, and then let's take a look at this. Still saving. All right, let's take a look at this if we were working on it in section. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off the, let's, Minimize that. I'm going to turn off the uh, Tahoe terrain. Sorry, wrong. Where is it? Tahoe site block. There it is. We're going to turn that off. So we're down to a, a smaller piece that we're working with. Now, like I said before, we're going to destroy some things. So right now, currently, we have this as a block reference. Sorry. This retreat as a block reference. We need to go ahead and explode that. So I'm going to type SEL block instance, and then I'm going to type explode. So you would only want to do this. It's not going to update anymore, but you would only want to do this when you get to the point where you're ready to kind of cut through the section. And again, it's destructive, All right? When it's all done, with it explode. I'm gonna go back and type SEL block instance again. And there's more block instances there. We're gonna go ahead and type explode there. We'll hit escape to deselect SEL block instance. And this is where we wanna be. No objects added to the selection. That means there's no more blocks in here. All the objects are actually live. And so when we start to do a split, we're gonna have an easier time with it. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna, uh, we'll leave the Tahoe train, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to create a big plane that goes through my building. So let's step back here. I wanna draw a plane. So I'm gonna do a vertical plane. I'm gonna zoom out here. And I'm gonna turn on ortho so that I'm straight. And that plane has to be bigger than everything in my, uh, oops, let me move it vertically. And we'll drop it down because I wanna make sure that it's intersecting with everything in my model. So there it is. If I were to zoom out, there's the line. I need it to intersect with my building. So let's move it. So that it's close to my building. Then let's zoom in on my building and decide where in the building it really needs to clip. So the idea of a section is that you want to show as much of your building as you can. And you also want to show interesting things in your building. So for example, if I were <coughs> to cut right here, looking to the right, 
right? I'd have just a little bit of stairs and I wouldn't have too much of my building. I would get much more if I cut further back here, right in front of that wall, right about there. If I were to cut further back here, I'd get terrain, but I wouldn't be getting as much in the building. So I wanna cut right about there. So let's take a look at it. We come in here and zoom in on it. There's my building. I can now select a piece of it here. We can zoom selected. We get kind of an idea of where I'm trying to cut through my building. So now that I have that line established, I'm gonna go ahead and take that big surface and put it on its own layer. So let's create a layer for section. And I'm gonna create a sub layer for cutting plane. And I could then take that and put it on the cutting plane layer. So let me right click and say change object layer. And now it's on that layer. So in its most simple sense, I could go in and do the V-Ray clipping plane here. I could come in here. And again, I'm just gonna use my building kind of as a guide. I could also use my big surface. If I came back all the way out here as a guide, let me do a vertical. That's probably even easier to use my, and I could say from there to there to there. And that then creates my clipping plane. I could then cut or hide this cutting plane. We can zoom in on my building. Go to zoom selected. Right, we can see it as if it were cut through. And now if I were to set this up, we'll say something about like this. Zoom in a little bit. And I were to render it, click on render. We get a beautiful section view of my building. Now in this context, again, the sun is going to act as if the whole building's wide open. So let's let this process a little bit. Don't worry about the background showing up. Right? In this context, we're not so worried about the background, we're worried about the foreground. So you can see it's filled in some of my floors and whatever. It's giving me transparency below, which is kind of awkward, um, but we're seeing inside the building. To me, this is still not the most accurate representation because we're getting shadows being cast and whatever. So the clipping plane exists. It's something that you can try, uh, but I don't think it's the best. So I'm gonna jump back up. I'm gonna delete that clipping plane. Oops, sorry, delete. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn back on that big plane. Now with that selected, we wanna go ahead and split every one of the objects. So let's select everything in our scene except for this big uh, plane. We'll type in split, and we're gonna split it with that big plane. And this is gonna take a little bit of time because it has to go through every object and split. So we have to just kind of let it, let it chug away. In the meantime, you can see how nasty my layers have become. I probably have a thousand layers now because of the explodes. This is again, why you wanna do this only on a file that you've done a save as with. So now we just need to let it be patient. Brooke, you've asked, you're asking a question on the section, section cuts only done through V-Ray. Um, you can do a Rhino section cut. There are, there are tools in Rhino to do it, but V-Ray doesn't recognize them. So uh, the, the way to do a section cut, the traditional way in V-Ray is to use the V-Ray clipping plane tool. Otherwise, uh, you have to do it this way. And I'm trying to show you that this way, while it's a lot more work, ends up giving you a far better result. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done my split. All of those are split. And what that'll let me do is I can select just half of this. And it's easier to do the selection actually in this uh, kind of top view. And actually, it might even be easier to do it in the bottom view. So if I went to set view and I went to bottom, you'll see that it flips everything over for me. Oh, no, it didn't. Go back to set view. 
top. I was thinking it was going to flip everything over for me, but it didn't. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to select everything on the side of my section cut that I want to be able to make um, see-through. And so this selection is actually a kind of a difficult one. So I'm going to hold down shift and we'll keep selecting here because we need to make sure we get everything. And so you may have to make some smaller selection groups. So it's like I'm missing a little bit right over here. And we can tell that the split worked because it's selecting everything for me that's on that side. So I've selected that. Now we have a slight complication here in that some of the materials are windows. And we wouldn't want those windows to be, um, we would want them to be transparent. So then I'm gonna go through and look at my really nasty layer list here. And I'm gonna look for where my windows would be, where my glass would be. And so I'm gonna look here, here's windows, window glass. We'll turn that off and that'll remove it from the selection group. Window glass, we'll turn that one off. I have my glass railing, we'll turn that off. So I'm just looking for anything that is glass. Those are all leftovers. These are all can lights. And I think we're good. Now that that's the case, I need to load in that see-through material. So I'll go into my V-Ray Asset Editor. And I gave it to you to load. You could create it, um, but you don't need to. You can just use it. Um, it is, let me see, where did I put it? Uh... I keep it in a folder called special material and there it is. And we'll go ahead and say open. And we should see a preview. Yep, that looks right. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and say apply to selection. Actually, it doesn't look right. Hold on a second. I'm gonna get, make sure I get the most current one. Um, let's save link as, and let's put it, into my folder for today. That is not correct. Seems like as a VR mat file. There we go. I didn't want to save the uh, HTML file. Okay, so I have that. Perfect. Let's go back and reload that. And that should be in today's folder. There it is. Yeah, okay, that's, that's accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to apply to uh, the selection. So now everything has that see-through material on it, except for the glass. So now I'm gonna deselect and I'm gonna turn these back on. But when I turn them back on, I'm gonna right click on them and say, select objects. Then I'll turn this one on, I'll right click and I'll say, select objects. Then I'll turn, uh, is that it? There's my railing, there we go. I'll right click and I'll say, select objects. And that should select all of the glass that's in my building. Let's zoom select it just so you can see it, there it is. That's all the glass. Now that's all of the glass. So now I need to deselect the part of the glass that I don't want. So it'd be everything on this side. And Mac's gonna kill me here. I don't think I can hold down the control key. Find out. Nope, it's not gonna let me. Love it. Uh, okay, so that's going to make things a little bit more challenging for me. How am I going to get around this? Hmm. It would be so simple. It should be. 
Okay, well, I'm gonna have to work around it. This is a, a Mac problem because I can't hold down the control key to deselect. Uh, so I'm gonna have to additive select. So what I need is I need the glass that's on this face and those pieces there. So I'm gonna take everything except for the glass railing and I'm gonna lock it so that I can't accidentally uh, select it here. So bear with me. I know it's annoying. Uh, let's see here. Lock. All right. Almost there. Um, and we can leave that section plane. That's fine. Lock that. Okay. So now what I should be able to do oops, is I should be able to select just the glass that's on this face because everything else is locked. So we'll select all of that glass. There we go. And this glass needs to be just plain transparent. So I'll go into my V-Ray Asset Editor and I'll create a new, a new um, material. We'll just say it's generic and we'll call this transparent. And where is it? There it is. Transparent. And we'll come over into our opacity and this is about as simple as it gets. We drag this down to zero and it's completely transparent. We will then right click and we'll say apply to selection. So all those glass pieces still exist. Uh, it looks like maybe I missed my uh, railing. Glass railing, I should have gotten that. Why didn't I get the glass railing? Let's try that one more time. We'll go to transparent. We'll right click and say apply to selection. And there we go. So now that that's done, we can go back to this render one view. I can scroll all the way down to my cutting plane. We'll turn that one off. And when I go to render, this is going to render as if the building is still there. So let's do a little test. Put it right there. And let's go ahead and let's render. So that was my previous one where I used the V-Ray clipping plane. And let's take a look at the difference. I think. I'm getting a weird hint of red. So I'm gonna to have to short, sort that one out. But you can see that the shadows are cast as if the windows still exist here and they're coming through. So that's the big fundamental difference. Furthermore, like the pool, for example, we're seeing it as if it had water in it as opposed to having it filled in. We may need to do a little work to, to fill out where the section cut would be in the ground. I'll come back and I'll do that one in a second. Uh, I think my problem is that my see-through material has red as its base color. So let's go back to see-through. There we go. And I'm going to change that color. Uh, let's change that to black. And then when we, we'll render again in just a second. So in that scenario, remember I split everything. I need to fill in what's happening in the bottom. 
right? So let's take a look here. Let's see. Oh, that's right, everything's locked. So I have to unlock everything. That's fine. We don't care so much about the cans, but we are going to need to unlock other things. So let's unlock, unlock, unlock. And almost there. There we go. Everything is unlocked. So now I can start to work with this. So once again, we have a cut that's already come through our building. So there, for example, is the edge of this piece of terrain. So let's go ahead and duplicate some edges. So let me dupe edge. And we'll say, let's cut this edge and let's do this edge. And let's do this one. Now I have those two edges. Let's do in the side view here. Let's zoom selected. And let's offset them. Oops, sorry, I've already got to, there you go. Offset, uh, I don't know, distance of 50 feet. So let's, there, curve. There's one. There's the other, and then we can end up lofting these together to build. Part of the bottom. Okay, so I'm just kind of filling that in. Now we've got a little bit of a challenge because we've got the bottom of the pool that's being cut through. So you may end up needing to hide a few things selectively. So I might take this piece of surface Right here, we'll hide it temporarily so we can kind of see in there. Uh, let me take this and let's hide that. Hide this. I'm just trying to kind of get a sense for what's in there. I might need to fill in a few more things. So I might come in here. Say, so let's come there. There, let's come across to that point there. No, we didn't do that. It I know. Hold on. Try that one more time. Three or four corner points. We can go from there. there and all the way to right there and we're filling that in and we're filling this in and then these we would need to assign some kind of a material to them that are you know black or dark gray or something to indicate that we've cut through the ground in these places. So let's go there. And I might actually put those down here on the section. Let's go ahead and add a new sublayer. Um, we'll call the section fill. And then we can right click and say a change object layer. Let's turn that off. And then you would take those objects and assign some kind of a material to them. So let's uh, select oops, these objects. And then maybe we'd apply, uh, you know, like a dark gray to it. So let's add a generic 
we'll just call this gray. And gray, there we go. And we will apply that to the selection. And then let's jump back into our rendered view here. I'm gonna go ahead and show everything. So I'll type show, pan, And then we could go ahead and render again. I'll click on that render. So there's always kind of fine tunings that may need to occur, but this should fill in underneath here with a little bit more solid. So we're not seeing through building there. So we'll let that uh, render out a little bit. Uh, we may need to take it a step further. We may need to, to actually hide the, the terrain that's in front. But yeah, now you can see that that's all filled in kind of in a nice gray and we're getting a pretty good result out of here. I would go ahead and I think I'd probably just hide that and this. And maybe even we need to extend the section going up a little bit that way. Let's take another render now that those are hidden. So anyway, I believe that you're getting the idea. I think you're you're seeing what it is that I'm trying to do. And you know, yes, these are are more, it's a definitely a more complicated way of drawing a section. But at the same time, I think the end result ends up being far more accurate and far more compelling and interesting when you start to create it that way. So we will use both of these tools going forward, uh, like when we create your line drawings or your plan. Uh, we'll use that V-Ray clipping plane to give us good, accurate results um, and, and obviously a line drawing out of it. So um, that's, that's definitely something that will continue to feedback on itself. This probably needs some post-processing uh, done in Photoshop. We may find that we don't want the background at all. So if we saved a PNG and got rid of the whole background, that might be you know, you know, a little bit better off. Um, we'll, we'll come back and we'll revisit this as a line drawing because um, obviously we'll do sections of the line drawing. But I think this is getting the bulk of what I'm trying to get across today um, done for you. Uh, it looks like maybe I didn't hide that piece of grass, or maybe I just need to turn off the fur that's on the grass uh, to get, you can see it right there, is, is kind of showing up and it shouldn't be showing up. So sometimes there's little tests that are involved just to make sure that everything's turning out the way you want it to. Um, it's this. Okay. Come on. Well, now it's mad at me. Nope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real cranky right now. So um, anyway, I will... Uh, I'll let this fend, you know, finish rendering out so that you guys can see a example of this section cut. The purpose today is to try to create a sectional render. So you should have everything set up. You should be able to, to create your, uh, your sectional rendering. Actually, you know, part of the reason this is probably showing up the way it is, is that I don't have the rest of the Tahoe terrain turned on. So if I came back, uh, let's see here, where is that? That might improve the background here. There, let's turn that Tahoe block on. There we go. Now I have my mountains. Hopefully that'll hide what, what we were seeing. Um, and then I'll do another render and we'll take a look. So let's go back here to render. And there it goes, right? <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, let me come back in here. I knew something was wrong. I was losing you. So let's see if we can do that one more time. Maybe not. There, that one is the one that I needed to hide. We'll hide that one. We'll get our view set up. 
again. That zoom in a little bit more. About there. And then we'll go ahead and render it one more time. All right, so like I said, I'll let that one kind of cruise its way out and then you guys can see the final uh, end product. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, I'm happy to, to talk through any questions that you have. Uh, if not, we'll meet during our check-ins uh, today. Thanks to those of you that came last week uh, or last on Monday, excuse me. Um, but we'll go through any questions you have. Naomi, I did finally send you those HDRIs. I apologize. If anybody else needs some of these files or are missing the files, let me know and I will be happy to, to send you an email with them. All right. So um, good luck with your sections. If you finish early and have extra time, keep working on that, um, the 3D model for your final. The further along you are, the better off you are. Today, you're not going to, this section doesn't work for assignment 205 or not, it's not a requirement. So it's really learning about the section tools, thinking about cutting it, splitting it, et cetera. So it's an experimentation phase. You will use this skill though later when you get to uh, creating the line drawings. 